Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Making a House a Home with myself, Sana Araji, and our guest, Fahima Muhammad, who's a qualified life coach and an NLP practitioner. Assalamu alaikum, Fahima. Alaikum salam. Now, today we're going to be discussing the topic around building positivity and confidence and overcoming fear. Mm -hmm. um, can you just go into depth about um, this topic for us and let us know what it's about? Um, having confidence, firstly, we as Muslim and Shia believers. Imam Al Jawad salam, has said that he who has confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees joy and he who trusts on him he will actually be you know successful with his affairs. Mm -hmm. So we need to know that being confident and you know being positive is not just something that we have to do from this day and age and it's not just because you know we have it within ourselves we know we are creations mm. from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that alone should give us the confidence and the positivity of being in this world knowing that he's given us the tools and the strategies to be able to overcome the challenges as life is a test and you know the holy quran states that you know um, that verily the friends of Allah you know of Allah you know shall have you know less fear and shall grieve less and I know that you know people say well you know we come up with all these hadith and these statements mm. and you know in reality just like with depression and all of that anxiety we feel it and yes we do and I'm not saying that we do not have moments that we do not have you know uh, negativity in our lives and things come up again and again in our lifetimes that will give us lack of confidence and positivity but as psychologists and studies have stated you don't need to have motivation and be driven in order to still have that way of being mm -hmm. so you know building co po you know positivity and confidence is having a belief that's what we need to instill with ourselves and teach our children Right. That when we have a belief that even though we're feeling down, we know we can come back to it. Because that foundation is set, it is solid, and it is strong. Knowing that Allah is there to help us, knowing that we as humans, we have these stages and steps that we have to take, like with mindfulness, like with meditation and prayer, being spiritual, you know, looking at the glass half full, for example. There are so many techniques and strategies that go deep into a human mind mm -hmm. to help them control through the situations that we're in. And remember, we are only ever in control of three things. What we give focus to, what we give meaning to, and what we do when we are faced with a challenge. Now these things, these are psychologists that have said this. These are like, you know, uh, coaches that are gurus that are like, you know, massive in the industry that will say these things. And the Quran says the same thing. And we have the best of supporters, the best of belief, the best of spirituality with our religion to show us that being positive brings positivity. And now only we're learning about the law of attraction and manifesting things. Allah says, you know, come to me, take one step and I'll come 10 steps closer. Mm. You know, live and be as what you would envision your future to be. A lot of us also in society, we feel that if we are shown to be too confident and too positive, then it's a borderline arrogance and also people don't like that because they want you to feel down because they don't feel that they can come up to your level. But then those people obviously are not on the same wavelength as you and mm -hmm. they need supporting but that you do not let them bring you down. You don't have to be you know, uh, less confident and less positive because someone else cannot handle it. You show more of it because if anything, they should be latching on to you and, you know, wanting to grab some of that, wanting to learn from it and wanting to, imply, you know, sort of imply that and, you know, apply that to their own way of living. Because only from that comes good things because you have hope. Mm -hmm. Even we discussed tawakkul, that comes into it, having that trust. Building confidence and positivity is not just about, you know, looking at things in a, in a better way it's about having trust and people don't have the trust and the belief anymore mm. when you go deep into that meaning of being positive and confident then you realize that it's always in you and it never breaks you might have moments and we always in coaching we try to accept you know those moments of negativity the moments where you don't feel confident and positive, mm -hmm. but you don't stay in that state for too long. That's when it becomes dangerous. That's when it becomes a health issue where right, you can okay. go into mental you know, issues of you know, anxiety, stress, and depression. Right, you see, okay. it becomes like when you don't understand it. Mm. Having lack of confidence, having lack of positivity is having lack of understanding. Right. Now, I've, I've read a few articles with regards to surrounding yourselves with positive people. Absolutely. Would you say, well, 
when you're a positive person and you're confident and you have a friend who's just constantly moaning about how bad their life is mm -hmm. and you first you don't want to really be as positive around them because you feel like well they're having a really bad time I shouldn't really show myself to be so happy yeah but at the same time you don't want them to drag you down because when, even like subhanAllah Allah says when you su surround yourself with good people because we without knowing we we go towards we yeah, we're become, influenced. We become like them yes. without us knowing. It's just yes. like when we go to another country or we speak to someone who has a strong accent. So without knowing, we our language mm. starts to change and we start to adapt to the how they Definitely. are. So it's the same thing with when you're around friends that are not positive. We'll always have that one friend if it's not ourselves. Yeah. We'll always have someone who's going through a hard time mm -hmm. and that, that complains and moans and nags and they don't really do anything about it, but all they do is complain. So that can drag you down and that could affect you from, you know, uh, keep maintaining your positivity and confidence, would you say? It can work with someone who is not genuine with their positivity and confidence. Right, okay. Because are you the one that's the influencer or are you the one that's being influenced? You mm. have to be a particular person who is strong so you do not get influenced negatively, regardless of what you're coming across. And even with raising children and being an adult yourself, you need to be put in different situations that are difficult. And there must be times where you are faced with negativity. You don't disregard it because even though as we need to be surrounded by positivity and good people around us who are successful so we can go, we have family members that we are you know, negative, are we gonna disregard them? No, we either be strong enough to be understanding and accepting Mm -hmm. but also strong enough to not let that negativity affect us even though right. we're around it. So you might distance a bit or you might influence you know, in a very smart way because you don't want to also be around someone who is going through something and all you are is positive and showing them, giving them answers and giving them solutions. No, you let them be in their space and show them and say, look, I'm here if you need to be and you know, you gotta keep continuing with your life and you know, doing certain things. So again, again, I go a lot deeper into if you are a particular way, nothing and no one will influence you unless you allow it and you want it. You have to take responsibility, even though everyone says that when you surround yourself with certain people, you're gonna adapt to that particular way. That will also happen, but you are attracted to that particular way because there's something within you that wants it too, right. subconsciously. So you need to change your habits. You need to also know yourself consciously and make it into something subconscious, a habit, that you are drawn to certain types of people for a particular reason. It's not their fault. You are drawn to it. You like it. You want to hang around with that group because that's what you feel inside, even though you know it's wrong, but you want to yeah. do it. So take mm. responsibility for that, mm. okay? And if you are in the wrong groups, you can be that influence to say, well, you know what, I'm going to bring them out of that circle instead of you getting into that circle, even if you stand alone. So, again, I look at it differently. Right. And it depends on the circumstance and the situation. But the stronger you are in your mind, and the only way you can get strong in your mind is whatever you're acting, doing, and believing, it is solid because of your own values, beliefs, and principles. Right. When you are solid with your own, mm -hmm. You only grab things that are incongruent and in, in form and in keep with what your original beliefs are anyways. And you can be in any crowd, any setting for weeks, months and years. But you hold on to that belief because you are doing your own practices and you're doing your own things to keep you in keep. Mm -hmm. But that takes a very, very special individual to be like that. And it takes work, it takes practice and it takes time. So, um, you need to build yourself into a particular mindset that your psychology is too strong to be broken by anyone or anything. Mm. Yeah. It's really important. Inshallah. And, and when it comes to confidence, what would you say to someone who's lacking confidence? How can they build their confidence? Um, confidence is, is not even about, you know, it's our interpretation of it. People think that if you're loud and if you put yourself first, that's confidence. That's one aspect of it but you are actually doing something that you wouldn't normally do, or you're taking on something and you're facing something that you don't normally, that's confidence too. Right. You know, you actually, you know, trying something even with fear, and that's one other way of actually which we're gonna come on to is overcoming fear, is you facing it in that moment. That mm. builds your confidence. And just remember, when you're riding a bike, for example, to begin with, you're not confident, you're scared, you're gonna fall over, but it's with practice, 
and with con consistency of doing the same practice, then you become confident. Mm. And it's like that when you enter a new job in a new company, even though you've been in the job, same profession for years, you go into a new company, they have their own rules, you are got to learn their way and adapt and you're not confident at first, you don't know people, but with time, you build that confidence. Right. You've got to allow yourself the time and adjust and it's okay to say to yourself that, oh, you know, it's, it's going to take me time and I, I actually don't know this and I'm going to learn and I'm going to try and do it the way that you aspire or expect from me. Mm. If you're in a company or in your house when you don't have confidence in speaking, follow somebody that does it and what do they do? Learn the techniques and follow that way. Mm. And just put yourself out there. Sometimes you've just got to face your fears. Yeah, definitely. Inshallah. And when it came to uh, anxiety, like as part of being a fear, now a lot of the things that hold people back is anxiety. Maybe something has happened in the past. Mm -hmm. that has created the anxiety, the fear. How can someone live a life of not being fearful when they've had such a bad experience in the, in the past? Again, I think with something like this, mindfulness is so vital. Mindfulness is bringing you here and now in the present moment mm. so that we don't let the past affect us nor the future because a lot of anxiety and stress happens when we're thinking of the past or the future. Right, okay. When we are in the present, right here, right now, and really focus on the present, everything's absolutely fine. There is no fear because we're not making assumptions and stories about what could happen, what did happen, and you know, that's what creates anxiety and fear. Mm. And at the same time, you know, there's different types of fear. There's fear of, you know, um, something that you're just scared of, like spiders. <laughs> so how you look at that? Mm. You know, it's, you know, with children, I have the technique where you place the spider in a box, in a frame. Okay. And in your mind, you visualize it looking funny, having long legs, dancing, or, you know, and then they start laughing. And that spider's not fearful. Or it's in a box, it's closed, it's put something far away, and you repeat the process constantly. And in a way, it becomes something that in their mind, they're actually not fearing it. I know it's hard to describe because mm. it's an action, it's a practice, but there are techniques to overcome fear when it comes to that. Okay. But general fear in us all, it's really assuming again, what did happen and it, sh it may happen again and we hold ourselves back and that is detrimental and we need to understand our mind is wired to protect ourselves so they will come across we will come across doubt and you know holding back and you know being sort of like you know thinking that oh you know we need to worry about this danger because it's a survival that we have in us wired in our brains as humans mm -hmm. yeah. that's how we survive but once you're aware of that then you realize there's certain things we need to be aware of like we need to apply the brakes straight away and have that sort of like, you know, survival mode and that stop mode and whatever it may be to protect us. But at the same time, if we think we're going to enter into a decision and taking a risk in business or whatever decision it may be, and if we're analyzing it on the assumption of a negative happening, we might lose an opportunity instead of going yeah. into it, um, learning that even if it doesn't work, we're going to still gain something from it because it's a feedback. Right, okay. There is a famous um, person who created the light bulb and when he came out of creating the light bulb he's like I tried a hundred times and 99 times I failed but I don't see how many times I failed the way I look at it is there were 99 ways of not doing it and the one way in which of doing it mm. so you know all these things is perception mm. it's all perception and if you look at failure as feedback rather than just, you know, not actually accomplishing something, but what we take away from it, and it's a very, very deep, meaningful learning, because that's the fear that people feel that they have to always succeed. And I'm like, like, like riding a bike or taking on anything new the first time. It's going to be mistakes. It's going to be things, but then you learn from it. It's just like with life, but we still feel that we need to go with life without struggle, with about, without, you know, and trying to avoid all these challenges. And with that, we stop ourselves mm. and we hold ourselves back. Yeah. And that's what creates more fear and anxiety. And that's what keeps us stuck where we will never progress in life. Yeah, so definitely. that is some another way of thinking which will help you overcome these sort of things mm. that you are faced with. And you can be a, 
in an, you know, an individual that is fearless. You really can. It all comes from resilience as well. Like yeah. we've spoken before about that, but I mean, at, at the course that I'm studying, we're focusing on children and how to create resilience with, mm -hmm. with, with children because a lot of the time they don't have it. And when they grow up, it affects their mental state yeah. because they don't know how to overcome challenge. So I know as adults, we find it difficult to be resilient, let alone children. Yes. How, how do we help children to uh, build positivity and the confidence and also to have that fearless, uh, that factor in them from such a young age? What methods, what tips? It's funny you say that, but actually, um as adults, we have all these filters, okay. knowing that, you know, because of experience, that something's going to hurt us. Because that's why we protect our child from touching that fire, because it's going to burn us. But kids are fearless, yeah. and they go for it. Take risk more. So they, we yeah. need to know that actually they do take more risks, and they see things without the filters that we've created over time. Okay, yeah. You know, and they're the ones that are braver, and they will take things on. But we instill that fear in them from our own fears. So it's not the kids that are the problem. If we're open ourselves, we allow that space for the children to grow and be positive and not having fear because we want to be careful and, you know, catch them before they fall. But instead of sometimes allowing them to fall and wake up and pick themselves up a few times by themselves. So we're limiting them, really. Yeah. We're restricting them from actual learning yeah. because we just wrap our children up in cotton wool, whereas they are, like you said, they do like to take risks. Yeah. And it's more we have the issue yep. and they don't absolutely so yeah so sometimes that experience is is actually not good for us but you know in time we need to obviously you know grow and have experiences but we need to know how to control it so that it doesn't overtake us inshallah thank you very much for that Fahima. we're going to have to go for a break now and inshallah we'll come back and answer some of your questions assalamu alaikum <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the second part of Making a House a Home, where we've been discussing um, how to build positivity, confidence, and to overcome fear. Now, we're going to be taking some questions from our viewers, Fahima. Um, our first viewer, Mohammed, says, Life is full of problems and issues at every stage in life. So how can we remain positive when there is so much negativity all around us, especially with this existing world? Um... Right there, there's like uh, a huge amount of looking at things from one perspective, mm -hmm. that life is full of challenges. Yes, we know that. Everything is full of negativity. I'd like to challenge that. Everything is not full of negativity. Again, it's the way in which we look at it. There could be a scenario, for example, that, you know, um, a woman could be, you know, learnt that she's now adopted right. over years. And their one scenario is she can say, well, I have never been loved by my original parents and I was abandoned and you know I'm adopted now and can you imagine the life that's going to come after that thought or that same woman can take the same situation and think well yes I was given up by my original parents but somebody chose me right. and they chose to love me and they've given me a chance and I'm actually one of the fortunate ones now how do you think those two scenarios will play with the future roles of how that impact of that mindset will, you know, transpire into their livelihood in the future. Mm. So, you know, again, you create the meaning for your situation and you choose what it is that you see in the same bad situations. We all have seen people come out of war and families that are broken or people that have had addictions or, you know, poverty or homelessness that are most successful people mm. because they did not let that come in between them and define them. If anything, that was a learning to work harder and to drive. And yes, there's negativity around us. Yes, there's lots of things that are happening. But how do you see it? Just like if you're going to blame the economy for your job, instead of saying that, while well, the economy is going down and that's what's the announcement on the news today, instead of saying, well, that's going to affect my life now and I'm not going to be able to afford my mortgage or it's going to be tough on us, we'll say, well, got to be smarter now as to how I'm going to, you know, work my finances, mm. you know? See mm. those two perspectives, same scenario. Again, it's just, you know, your different, way of thinking. Yeah, different thinking. 
Inshallah. Thank you very much for that. Um, hopefully, Mohammed, that helps you. Um, our second viewer is uh, Mehdi. Some personalities are so strong. How can one become more confident while having a quiet personality and a different way of thinking to the rest and compete? Again, it's how we view confidence and the main thing that people think confident people are loud and they have the biggest mouths. But when you realize that actually those sort of people, as we were discussed in the, you know, being arrogant and boastful, mm -hmm. you know, they are loud because they're actually compensating for the fact that, you know, they don't want to see something in underlying and deeper meaning, which is actually right. negative. Mm -hmm. So confidence is not about being loud and having a wide personality because there's a lot of people that are quietly confident because they don't need to be outspoken. Yeah, because when sure. they do speak, it is something of substance. It is only necessary and it actually gets the job done. It gets a message across or wherever it may be. So yeah. confidence has to be looked upon in a different light. It's not about being, you know, the class clown or the, the joker in, you know, in your family. A lot of the times it's psychologists have analyzed that people are like that. They're actually holding back and withdrawing from the real issues that they're facing and that's a cover up and a mask. Mm. So confidence is, it is actually quiet. You don't need to be loud if you're confident. It's like if you have faith and belief, you don't need to worry about being influenced. Mm. Even if whatever crowd or whatever situation scenario you're in. Mm, That's what I mean. Inshallah, thank you for that. Um, our next viewer is uh, Sura, and uh, the question they, said they have is, I have fear about the future and most things in general as I hear so many stories about life in general, like bad marriages, bad parenting, and bad in-laws. How can one overcome this fear when looking ahead while hearing all of this? If that's what you're constantly hearing, then you make that change and difference and show that it's going to be different. Mm. Even if it's fear, you don't have to sit in the corner and just not live life. That's one way of thinking. You know, I'm going to be that change. I'm going to create a, a successful marriage. Or even if it's not, I'm going to make it successful. I'm going to be the one that's, you know, people say, well, I don't have a role model. Well, then you be that role model that you want to see. Mm. You know, it's just yeah. the way you look at it. It's just the way you want to do. Let it drive you instead of driving you downwards. Let it drive you upwards. And failure is something again we, we discussed and touched upon is actually a really good learning. Don't be afraid of it, and don't teach your children that to fail is something wrong and bad, and it actually makes you a less of a person. If anything, if you come out of it understanding what did you do wrong, what did you learn? Even if it, for a simple example, is if you have a spelling test and that one word you got wrong. Because mm -hmm. you got that one word wrong and you go back and analyze it, that's the one word you'll never get wrong again. You'll never ever get it wrong again because you made that mistake. You go back and you think, oh my God, I didn't get 100% because I missed out on that one word. And you go back and you look at that word and you're like, now I know what it actually you know, spells. You yeah. know, what, it actually, what are the words to make it? And you will look at it and that's the one word you'll remember for life and you'll never get it wrong. But you had to make that mistake. Mm. You had to get it wrong. So that's with everything in life. You know, things come to us. Um, and we, don't, we need to understand life differently. It is not like the movies. It is not Hollywood. It is not, you know, what media dictates, you know, certain people should be and the attributes they should have in order for this perfect world. It does not exist. We know, we need to know the reality of what this world entails. Mm. And even with, with hardship, there is ease. That another really powerful statement that even with negativity, even with all these challenges, we are going to be overcoming this. Yeah. It's the way in which we look at it and keep striving and it only elevates us to build our strength men mentally and physically. Yeah, very true. Thank you for that, Fahima. Inshallah, this helps the, the viewer with the query. Um, our next viewer is Miriam. And the question is, how could one overcome the fear of failure? We've touched up a bit on that, but failure seems to be very um, common. Yes, the of fear course. of failure. It's because as well, we're looking at how people view us, firstly. Um, we need to change mindsets and mentality. And again, if we can't, we need to sort of own it and say, yes, I didn't do badly and it's okay. Instead of pretending that we're not you know, perfect. And again, when we have that failure and we so badly want to, you know, get better from it, let that process happen and let you, let yourselves, you know, overcome that failure and have success. Go back and talk about it and realize mm -hmm. that, you know what, and be open and say, you know what, even your own children and say, I did fail many times with certain things that I've, you know, undertaken, but this has taught me something. Overcoming failure is so important for learning. Mm -hmm. 
and actually experiencing failure is something that you know helps you grow and learn right. we need to change our ways of thinking of failure there's only feedback from it so mm. forget failure as in what it just stands for look at it as feedback look at it as learning look at it as something that even from that failure you have gone into an area that you wouldn't have gotten into and know not to go there again or to approach it differently that's how you got to look at it yeah. and failing is something that builds resilience that builds strength it depends what you take from it mm -hmm. don't just go into a cocoon and say I haven't done this and yes it can set you back even months or a whole year of studying again but maybe you need that development to grow and appreciate as well. Mm. Maybe you're going to be sat with a different group of people that is meant for you. Again, that builds upon the trust. That if you have belief, you will not have the fear of failure. You will not have the fear of not being confident. You will not have the fear of not being positive. Because again, it comes down to having belief. Knowing that what Allah has sent to us as a challenge and for us not to even, you know, have most of the time when we've asked for certain things because he's giving something better or he's giving something more to us, yeah, is to have yeah. that patience. It all comes down to that spirituality and that real tawakkul. Do we really have that? And it applies in every area in our lives. So mm. that's what we need to remember. That's what we need to learn. And you don't need to worry what comes to you, good or bad. You're going to be fine either way. So kind of implement it from a young age because I think with yes. when you're an adult, if you've been exposed to failure being a bad thing, it can be more difficult to get your, your mindset out of the fact that fa failure means progress or feedback. Yes. Whereas if we start it from a young age, the, ch the children won't have that issue Definitely. and that anxiety of fe fearing to, f you know, uh, f having that fear of failure. So it's kind of good that we start it if you're aware of it now and, and, and if you're watching this and you know to start with your children from a young age so it can prevent them from having that anxiety in, in the future. And having a different concept of life, mm. it doesn't have to be comfortable all the time. In fact, it gets boring and that's when mm. people actually do get depressed because of having a very average life. And yeah. that failure or that struggle or that challenge, you know, excites you. You should try and, you know, sort of welcome it because you know you're going to get to the next stage of your life. Yeah, then sure. remaining stuck with the same old routine, staying safe and living a mediocre life. So look at it like that, you know. Mm. If you don't have a challenge, throw yourself in a challenge. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> now, um, our last viewer is uh, Zina. And her question is, what can be done to instill more positive thinking on a daily basis, regardless of what is faced? Reflection is really important and I always tell my clients generally to have a gratitude diary and to write down five things that they really are grateful for for that day. It could be as simple as loving the sunshine or, you know, having your hands and legs to be able to walk. We don't really appreciate the basics. And mm. Allah says appreciate the basics to get more instead of just wanting more. You Very know, true. we need that. And we need to know the reasons why we also are grateful, not just listing the, uh, uh, you know, uh, a whole array of things. We need to understand why we are grateful for it. Mm. And that's the most basic and simple thing. And you know, we don't reflect in our salah. And we need to give ourselves time to do that, whether it's before or after, or just before bed. And you know, look, reflect upon the day that you've actually had. What could I have done better? What did I do that was good? How did I help someone? How did I avoid helping someone that I could actually take upon myself? Someone wanted my time and I was too busy. I'm going to make sure I call them tomorrow. You know, things like that. Grateful that people are coming to you and turning to you. Grateful the fact that you have that ability to do what you're doing every day when other people are only praying for it. Right, okay. You know, we come from backgrounds that are, you know, from not very good, you know, countries that are suffering in this day and age, you know, with war, with poverty, with, you know, I don't know, so many things, so mm. many things that we only make ourselves aware of in Ramadan. Okay, very true, yeah. so let's just remember this, it happens all year round, at this very day and age, in this very stage, and no matter how much modern and, you know, we are with technology and the amount of money that's available and how much it's, you know, sort of basically in one area only, and we're using that, but we're not looking at what's still missing. Mm. And uh, to be happy, to be fulfilled as humans, it's about being, you know, helpful to others, giving, giving, literally giving. That creates, you know, happiness and positivity. When you're able to give something, even if it's not something physical, but your time, yourself, a service, sit with someone and give them that time. 
you know, give yourself that time to reflect on what more you can do for society or for your family members or for your friends or even a stranger. Right, okay. And that will build the positivity because you're looking at life differently when you give more. You have to give. Life is about a service. You've got to gain all that knowledge, all that wisdom, all that education only to serve others. Yeah. And definitely. that's what gives the best happiness and fulfillment. And that po positivity will keep rolling in and you will find opportunities and doors that open for you that you're going to be so overwhelmed with. Mm. You know, and be patient. Mm. Really be patient. Don't just say it. Patience is not waiting. Patience is doing something while you're waiting. Are you still complaining while you're waiting? It's like, I'm being patient. It's, so it's been two years, it's been three years. It's, you know, my life hasn't changed and I'm patient. No, I have the right attitude about being patient. Mm. Life is about connecting the dots. We don't see the whole picture till the end and every stage is another dot that we're connecting. And it might be a challenge or not, but like the season, it does not last forever. So just take it as it comes along. Have so much faith and belief and practice with love whatever you're practicing and everything everything that you touch will turn into a gem yeah very true thank you very much for that and another um thing that came to my mind was volunteering i know we spoke about that before mm -hmm. but giving back to the community whichever form yes yeah whatever form whether it be um children who are unwell in hospital or adults who are unwell in hospital or just charities just giving back and having that feeling of, do you know what, I'm, I'm able to do this. Allah's blessed me with good health and, and I'm, you know, I'm not in poverty. And to be able to give back, that can help increase positivity because it can boost your morale, your confidence Absolutely. and make you appreciate uh, life. And health is so important. We take it for granted that we are you know, in the state where we can just wake up, dress up and move and do what we need to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we also need to worry about. What is your real meaning in life and purpose? Very true, yeah. You need to analyze that. You know, in this modern developed country, there's still food, you know, places that have, you know, areas where they require food. Imagine, forget mm. outside this country. So, you know, we're still fortunate. We still, you know, click our fingers and we buy things and we go on holiday and we book stuff and we do things and we eat whatever we want to eat and we, you know, we go places where we want to go. Um, don't take anything, anything for granted and reflect on your life and, you know, that's when you need to look in the past is to see how far you've come and yeah. how much further you can go. Exactly, yeah. No, that, that's very true. Thank you so much for that, You're Fahima. Welcome. Um, and I hope that those questions were answered for our dear viewers. Um, but we've come to the end now of, the, of this topic. Again, we could probably carry on discussing <laughs> more and more. Um, but thank you for watching and inshallah you've benefited from the discussion that we've had today and inshallah we will see you soon assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh <laughs>